to know my husband, Bill Weiner, is to know that he was not only a very, very kind and wonderful individual, but he was really an inspiring person uh, and even a transformational figure, for, for certainly for me, but I know for other people also uh, in our Department of Neurology where he was chair. Frankly, it just really upended my life when he was gone because we not only were married, but we had this professional relationship too. So it was just an all-encompassing kind of thing. You know, when somebody's really ill and he died of cancer, uh, you know, you don't have the time to figure out what it's going to be like when it all comes to an end, even when you realize that they're dying. And, you know, I just sort of figured that because I am a neurologist, I deal with people with serious illness, and for goodness sakes, I counsel other people who are dealing with serious problems and loss. You know, I thought, well, I probably know more than the average person and I'll get through this. So, you know, when Bill died, I was just really uh, astonished because I realized after a time that I didn't know the first thing about what it was like to have a mass of loss like this in your life and how it not only upends your life, I mean, the main thing, I guess, is that I thought it was going to be all about sorrow, but that wasn't what it was. It was all about uh, really feeling like you woke up into a completely new world, that you not only didn't know yourself, but what your life was about, where you were going, what you were going to plan to do. And so, you know, I, I try to be very honest in the book. Uh, and because I think it's important for others to hear this because I think our culture has sort of embraced sort of a, you know, mythology about what loss is like. A lot of sorrow, there are stages, you see closure, at some point things improve. Um, but instead, uh, I try to be very um, raw about what happened in the book because I think, gee, I just wish I understood more about this and that I could read something like this at that time to affirm that what I was going through was normal because I think many people going through terrible loss think that they're not normal, that something's wrong with them. I came to realize that what I was experiencing as grief if I looked at the same experience through the eyes of a neurologist, my other life as a neurologist, I realized that if I was looking at myself as a neurologist, I would see grief as being brain dysfunction because I, my, my thinking process, my ability to be attentive, um, my uh, thought process, my orientation, uh, my ability to organize and plan things. So many things had changed about um, who I was and how my brain functioned. So that really led me to dive into research about how grief and loss affect the brain. And what I learned is that there's a huge amount of research about the impact of emotional trauma on the brain and the neurobiology of stress of chronic stress and what it does to us. So we have a tendency, undoubtedly, to think about, as I did, say post-traumatic stress disorder as being this other thing that occurs to especially people who are in combat and veterans and so forth. And then we think about the grief after the emotional trauma of going through an illness and death with somebody so close to us, we think about those as two separate topics. But I came to uh, embrace the idea that these things impact us in very, very similar ways. I did not know that these periods of dissociation were even occurring for a long time. Because dissociation is, is defined as detachment from reality. Uh, it's not loss of reality, you're not psychotic. <laughs> but instead you're detached from reality. And the incredible thing is that it's a very clever way that our brain protects us 
from overwhelming uh, emotional disturbing material that we're not ready to handle. It's like an escape hatch that the brain protects us from uh, all the kinds of disturbing memories and emotions that we're just not ready to have. They'd overwhelm us. So say, for example, as I say in the book, the first time I became aware of it, although it was happening for quite some time, was that I was just simply um, preparing uh, a recipe in the kitchen when I opened up a recipe book and found a scribbled note from my husband uh, next to the recipe and it was the very day he had been diagnosed and he wrote an optimistic uh, hopeful message next to the recipe and when I saw the message it was just like I say understandably it wasn't just poignant it was emotionally overwhelming and then I really lost track of time until I found myself standing in the kitchen holding the knife preparing to dig into the recipe and I was wondering what just happened for the first time I had a flash of insight something just happened because I lost a period of time and what how, why did that happen I was completely mystified until I saw Bill's note and then when I saw his note for the first time I went that is what's going on here. When we read or see something or reminded of something that is an overwhelmingly emotional experience, our mind is able to kick in and say, hold on, you're not ready for that stuff yet. And just detach you from it for a while. That was a real pivotal moment for me because then I realized maybe if I learn more as a neurologist about what grief and loss are about, maybe I'll learn more about what you can do to heal. And that turned out to be true. And if we think about it, all the things that the person who's having PTSD is describing, by and large, are extremely similar to the things that people who are suffering grief and loss or a violent assault, as I said, a motor vehicle accident. What do we all experience? Uh, anxiety, sleep disturbance, flashbacks, disturbing dreams, uh, it being less attentive, ruminating about the experience during the day. All of that occurs no matter what kind of trauma we, we suffered. And, and getting back to Bill, you know, um, at some point in time, I never planned to write a book in the whole early period, more than a year after he was gone. Uh, and, but when it, I made that decision and I began to work on the book, you know, I felt really deeply, as I do today, that you know, he would really be proud of this.